sort of a whirlwind tour of the uh, technology platform that we see from the CCRM side. Um, we have it broken into two sections. So one's a little bit more opinion and analysis as we go through, sort of see as we see the landscape and some of the pieces set up, and then the other one's more sort of the news broadcast on what the platform actually looks like as we go through these things. So we'll, we'll dive back in. I just wanted to reorient. You know, this is what we talked about yesterday. So we had, you know, John talk about the customer strategy pieces. You know, Craig was up here talking about the experience delivery. We had Pete and Scott talking about the financial management components to it. And really, you know, this is, this is the part that makes all of that real. This is the enablement pieces to it. This is what's really going to drive those things together as we go forward. And it's an interesting discussion usually as we go in and start talking to organizations, as they start to approach and start to think about how they're actually going to conquer these things, how they're actually going to come out and say, you know, build the platform that allows you to integrate across all of those things. And where I find myself is in these weird discussions that they, you know, in theory think that we build unicorn farms or we go out and we do other things along these lines. But the reality of it is, is the technology is not the problem. You know, typically it's within the organizations and some of those other pieces that are out there that actually are causing the problems within there that actually do the limitation for what they're trying to achieve. So that they have that, you know, that you'll have IT buying pieces of it, you'll have the marketing team buying components of it, you'll have digital uh, technology within the marketing side buying components of it. You know, that's usually where the limitation occurs. It's not necessarily a fact of the matter that you know, we don't have the technology components and we can't link the technology components and actually start to bring those things together. So, you know, when we look at it, you know, as we start to break down the problem, you know, we think of it sort of in these areas. Um, you know, we think of it across the known and the anonymous world. You know, the known world as a whole, when we look at it, is really more that traditional direct mail. It's the fact that I know Matt Mobley at an address, where he lives, I know very physical things about him. You know, the anonymous world today is really where the vast majority of the digital stuff are setting. It's the notion of the cookie, it's the device ID, it's the, you know, the device fingerprint as we start to expand some of those pieces out to them. And we also think about it on the, the continuum of the non-interactive to the interactive side of the house. Um, you know, and, and it's sort of easy to put it in to say, you know, that offline is the non-interactive side and online is the interactive side, but in reality, you know, when I think of interactive, I think of, you know, I think of it in a different context because there's a lot of interactivity in there. It's really at the point in time that we have to use data that we already know, already house about it, and react to data that occurs within session and bring those two pieces together in order to make a decision about what's that next part of the experience that's going to happen. So the interactivity side, to us, it's not just the fact I go in through display or site or I'm having social. It could be a fact of um, you know, going in and calling the call center or going in through some of those pieces that are out there. So it's a, it's a broader topic to us. And as we go in there and we start plotting you know, within our matrix, we start plotting some of the components where people are making investments today and are starting to look at it. You know, Obviously, the vast majority of us all have the, you know, the marketing databases that are established within there that sort of control our direct mail and these pieces. And pretty much, you know, maybe we're making some sort of inroads in order to bring those about in order to start to drive more digital data and drive more pieces into it. But it, and on, a, on a whole basis, they're really stuck within the known world uh, as a basis. Some of us have gone down the master data management route. You know, we think that we're going to take the known world and we're going to, you know, apply this set of services that enables these pieces to start to drive out and start to drive into, uh, you know, really uh, facilitating both in the operational systems and driving it out into the online systems. Uh, the interesting thing is, is those two things are usually separate. Marketing normally owns one and IT owns the other one. Uh, and inherently, I'll tell you, if, you know, if IT solely owns anything that's going to be contributing to, you know, the business side, there's usually a, you know, a misalignment. You know, it's usually, hey, we're going to build our big, you know, monolithic IT capability, spend a lot of money there, and then in year two, year three, year four, we'll figure out how we're going to tie these things to it. And there's usually a lot more IT initiatives that sort of get stacked up to those things. Today, I mean, we heard the panel talk about, you know, we think about DMP. This is where the next big investments are going. But in reality, you know, DMP stuck up in the upper right-hand quadrant. You know, it's focused on the anonymous side. And in essence, you know, the vast majority of us are, when we're putting DMPs in, 
we're putting them in for display. You know, we may branch it out if you think about, you know, like X plus one, these guys do site personalization and association to it. The vast majority on display, you may bring in some, some portion of the search, but you're only talking about a limited set of channels that you're actually focused on. And that purchase, again, is happening within a group within your digital marketing group. So there's not the connections that go in there. I mean, we have data exchange up there. I sort of lump, uh, you know, DMP, data exchange, sort of bring some of those things together. I mean, you thought we talked about Blue Kai up here. You know, those are some of the pieces that start to come together on those. But ultimately, these, these things, not only do they have separate organizational purchase paths, but they're actually separate from what some of the pieces are together. So when we think about the framework and we think about the pieces in order to get it to us, you know, we, we try to rationalize these pieces into, you know, two distinct areas. You know, when we start to develop these areas, you know, we look at it at the fact that there's, you know, on the bottom, the marketing data warehouse, all of the data, all of it, every single bit of data about customer, every single component that you put in, be it digital, be it, uh, you know, social sites, mobile, search, if you can get search in there, display, all of that has to go down to the data warehouse because it's effectively the foundation. You know, if you talk about where the analysts are going into and what they're accessing, you know, that's the platform that they're going to derive the insights that are going to get fed out in order for you to control the experience or guide them into the next decision or get them, take them to the next piece to it. So, you know, we really need to start looking at the warehouses and start to really expand those warehouses out in order to capture all of that in. If you haven't started putting that data in today, you got to start putting it in today, right? If I said that sort of uh, backwards in there, but, you know, you also have the interactive marketing platform. Um, you know, this is the data that you need within the channel. This isn't necessarily all of the data but it's the integrated view of the data that sits within the warehouse side. This is that set of known data that needs to be used at the point in time that some decision has to occur within the actual, you know, the channel or some of those pieces. So I take the channel data that's actually generated by the consumer at that time, mix it with the data on the, the interactive uh, marketing platform side, bring those together to bring those decisions together. And that, that's the piece that has to start to come together for. And this is where we have to start looking you know, as, as, you know, and Merkel thinks about it, you know, is really expanding that concept of DMP. You know, when I think of DMP, I don't think of, you know, why, well, I, I will say to myself, why isn't the DMP used in order to help facilitate the things that are within the call center? You know, why isn't it at site? Why isn't it at every interaction that we have, where we have that, you know, true interactivity that we have to understand things? Why aren't we using the DMP or the DMP-like capability in order to do that? And why, you know, when you talk to most of the DMPs, why is it just anonymous? Because when I call in that call center, you flip the number off of the, uh, you know, the CTI in there, I, I can get pretty close to it. It's Matt Mobley. We know something about him. You know, we have some detail about him. I need to react on this and what he's telling that servicing agent and be able to pull those things together and be able to drive it forward. So where we get to is where we think about the larger platform. Because it's also, it's not a question of, you know, separating the two platforms out. And I think it was Kristen talking about the fact that, you know, here in the near future, it's going to be a single marketing organization. It's not going to be the digital guys, and it's not going to be, you know, the direct mail side of it. It's not going to have this separation in these pieces that are going to that are going together. It's really, it's one single platform. It's all of the connective tissue from being able to get the data out of the warehouses that has all of the digital data into what you need in order to have a true interactive relationship into these things and ultimately drive that stuff out into the channels so you can really start to have, you know, in-depth, rich conversations, have context, have, you know, relevance, have a real message to talk to someone. I mean, the expectation as we go through this is, you know, as a consumer, when I come in, my expectations, you know, admittedly, I probably have a higher expectation just for my, you know, what I do for a living, but my expectations is I want you to know if I had a bad experience, I want you to know if I've seen these display ads, I want you to know what I've seen on the site, I expect the site to be personalized, I expect the call center to know what those offers were with on the site, I don't want those two things separated. You know, I want to know if I can call the call center and say, hey, uh, you know, when I was on the site the other day, I saw this great advertisement, it's 20% off it was, or something like that. I want the call center to be able to come back and come and say, yep, Mr. Mobley, we know exactly what you saw on that site. It was a 20% discount, you know, here's the new uh, cost on TVs or whatever we were looking at at that time. So when we, when we come down to the, ne to the next level of this stuff, and you know, actually this slide was at the very end, and it's, it's been brought all the way forward just to sort of set up before we start walking through those technology pieces. You know, this is, this is how we sort of look at it, right? 
you know, and it, and it sort of goes over the, the, the steps that we go through as we, we pull these things together that, you know, ultimately the first thing we have to do is bring those known and unknown worlds together. We have to unite them. We have to integrate them. We have to bring all of that data and try to create the associations for it. And it's not just a question of identity. It's also a question of capturing its experience. It's being able to have the fact that I was mousing over something on a website, the fact that I clicked something, the fact that I saw a banner ad, the fact I called a call center, the fact I walked into a branch, a retail store, made a purchase, all of that whole, you know, the, the entirety of that experience has to come together, rationalized down to the fact that we know who the individual is. So, you know, of those two, you know, those are the two bases for those platforms out there. And when I have that, it's about having the analytics in every part of it. You know, we look at it from embedding the analytics to the platforms we have that, you know, in the past you saw that these platforms were actually created and sort of you brought the analytics guys to the table a little after the fact. So you built your marketing warehouse, you got all your data together, you did all these things, and then the analytics guys would come and try to make sense of it and build their own platform and, you know, start doing all their data. And in reality, they need to be as much at the table on the front end of any of these components as what it is, because ultimately from how we bring identity together, how we understand experience, how we make a decision, how we take the next step within those things, the analytics are the core to every piece of this, to every component that we have that we're actually building up there. And then, you know, once we get sort of the data together, we get the analytics together, it's the question of being able to facilitate that out. And it's not the question of the fact that we understand and we can see what it looks like, but it's also about being able to make those decisions and drive those data points into the actual channels. So if I'm coming in on the site or if I'm, uh, you know, sending an email out, I want to have a shared set of data, a shared set of decisions, a common set of decisions across those things. So across all of those channels, and I have to be able to facilitate all of that data and all of those decisions into those things and actually bring it across. And, you know, ultimately it leads to the ultimate goal, right, which is this whole integrated, the, you know, the totality of the system is integrated from all of those quadrants, from left to right, from bottom to top as we go forward. So that's a bit of the view. I mean, that's, you know, that's some of the, you know, the opinion and analysis on, especially as how we see it, you know, what we see with our client bases. And as we think about how DMPs are bought or we think about how marketing databases, you know, I, I think the, you know, and really Steve who's uh, following me in this will talk a little bit about the organization. You know, that's, that's the hurdle today. I worry less about the technology side, you know, because I think we're at a point now where we can start to, you know, really, really push the envelope. The technologies are there, the capabilities are there and allow us to really push the envelope. If we solve the organizational side, you know, you, you sort of unlock everything that we talked about within those th first three sections yesterday. You know, you really start to get those things. If you're able to start to bring together the different groups that are within there, your ability to achieve this, it's, it's a snap. It's very easy. It's able to, you're able to really uh, get down and you know, muster the team and pull those pieces together. So here's the, here's the other side. This is where we talk about when we're physically talking about what we would go do you know, as we go solve this. And you know, being the IT guy, actually, I, my preference would get into a little bit more of a technical story about this. But if anyone wants to venture into those waters later, I'd be more than happy. But you know, in reality, here, here are the six core capabilities. Here's how we look at it. You know, it's obvious, you know, some of these things are somewhat obvious because it's what we talked about in the past about, you know, it's really the connected profile. It's bringing all of that data together, um, you know, but it's, it's really, it's not just, you know, as we, as we said, it's not, it's not just the name and address component and it's not the cookie. It's also thinking about, you know, the, when I think of the, the profile or the identity, it's, it's a multitude of things that actually come together in order to bring, you know, to actually understand who someone is. There's the longitudinal view of the interactions. This is the experience layer. You know, having the places where we capture that data, where we pull that data in, where we collect that data. You know, these two layers alone is where, you know, we've probably made our most significant uh, investment at Merkle when it comes to big data technologies. You know, in order to be able to accommodate, you know, especially for some of our large, um, you know, our, our, uh, our large partners out there, be able to accommodate the volume of data that comes in. If you just think about capturing all the data related to like site analytics, making sense of that, then you bring in your DFA data, your Atlas data, you know, you start bringing in maybe your social data and those pieces. I mean, it gets to be a pretty sizable piece and, you know, it, it's definitely a, a piece where we, we had to make significant investments to get to. 
The Insights platform, the channel, uh, cross-channel marketing mix enablement, you know, these are the two platform pieces that we see that really are starting to drive the insights to it. It's the common platform that is, you know, effectively at the core of what we do. Um, you know, they're as important. You know, you really, to tell you the truth, the interesting thing is you don't see me say, you know, build a marketing database, right? It's they get the data together, get to the analytics, get to the insights as we drive this, because that's, that's really where, you know, in essence, where we all really make the money. It's not necessarily just having that data together. Also driving out to the personalized experience. Um, you know, it's all of those things above it, data, insights, driving out to every channel, every channel. And you know, at the point in time that we get to the, in the organization, they say there, there may be challenges, that we can't drive those things out. You know, that can be done today. The technologies are there today. And then the bottom one to us, you know, which is something as we look at, as we think about that user console uh, concept. I mean, the, the other problem is that we have within these platforms is many times, you know, there's not enough transparency. You know, the person, there should be this centralized console, and there is centralized consoles that allow the person in operations to the person executing marketing, to the executive to be able to evaluate how things are performing, what the data looks like, what's actually occurring within those things, how segments are interacting, what's the actual experience occurring with specific pieces. You know, that transparency is as important as the top pieces, because without it, you know, you're going to end up with, you know, organizations and people building other components uh, and other pieces to it. So we'll walk through a little bit here. Uh, this, is the, this is the identity side. You know, this is, this is the anonymized identity. You know, when I think, I mean, it's, it's interesting. So I, you know, I, I sort of started to allude, you know, we think name, we think address, right? We think uh, device ID, we think cookie. Cookie is probably the one that most think of. First party, third party cookie. How many third party cookies? You know, there's, you know, the average household, I think is, you know, for consumer households, like 14, 15, 16, somewhere in there. So it's, I mean, it's a significant amount of data associated to those pieces. But it's also, you know, the aliases that are out there. It's the handles that are out there. It's the IP addresses and those pieces to it. I mean, the other thing is, is we have to have the systems in place to start thinking about, you know, if cookie eventually goes away, you know, what, what happens within the cookie-less world? You know, how do we start to think about, you know, we have to really start to think ahead of ourselves in these things if we start thinking about, you know, how do we start capturing via device fingerprint, right? How, do we have the systems in place today and are we think about it from an identity standpoint in order to be able to capture that way? And those are, you know, that's the horizon that's coming out. That's at that five-year mark. We're going to see where, you know, the cookie is going to diminish and we're going to start to see where, you know, the importance of having partners that can get us into that sort of device fingerprinting and things like that are really going to drive us. And then ultimately, as we talked about, it's connecting it to, you know, the known person and driving and be able to say. And, you know, the way that we approach it is, is that, you know, the engine's got, you know, two pieces to it. One is, you know, this notion that it's a collector. It's an aggregator. It's grabbing, you know, the identity components were appropriate. It has the set of rules that it's constantly evaluating every time a new identity component is actually brought in. It reevaluates it against a set of rules and determines where it can make the new associations to it. So it's always that. It's, you know, to us, you know, I call it, you know, when I, when I think about it, it's the learning system of identity and the pieces that are out there. It's being able to evaluate, to capture the fingerprint, to capture the device ID and start to pull those things together. But it's also about you know, being able to tune the rules appropriate for their usage, and it's about being able to tune the rules appropriate for the organization, uh, tune the rules as they look at how they have from privacy concerns and all those other pieces, uh, and also enabling, bringing other, uh, in other data assets in order to start to empower these things. The other side to it is, is you know, once I capture identity, I start capturing and I start focusing on experience. And I start capturing all of the other pieces. And really, you know, you can capture, we, I mean, we go through some projects where people say, hey, we need to rationalize our, you know, our web analytics um, capabilities, and we need to do this. But, you know, ultimately, I'll run back and say, hey, you know, there's really no point in starting to ra rationalize all the data coming out of the web analytics side if we're not going to do some rationalization of identity first. Because really, the meaningfulness of us to be able to construct the consumer experience and to be able to understand you know, how it relates down to that single individual is effectively the key that opens the door to, you know, day two of our sessions. You know, the customer strategy, attribution, uh, the, uh, the, customer, uh, the customer experience pieces that were out there. You know, having that with the identity, you know, I, 
I effectively am enabling everything across the board on those things. Even before I had the technology to necessarily connect it up into the actual physical channels where you'll get personalization in some of those pieces. But you know, I, I mean, you can see it. You'll know who you're talking to. I can affect some piece, so I can understand the spend that we have. I can understand those pieces to it. And then ultimately, I can start to optimize the experience or I can provide guided experiences, right? If I know certain segments that are coming out and I can start to see very clearly as we start to look at the experience across those segments, you know, this is the normal path that they go on. And we can say, hey, if we could interject this type of message, uh, this type of personalization, this type of decision at that point in time, maybe we accelerate our buying process, right? Maybe we drive them to have a better experience, more likely to be retained, more likely to sign up for a new membership, right? Or renew their membership as they go through. So having those view, you know, those are the two important pieces, the two most important pieces in my book. Here's the marketing database, I had to put it in there. Um, you know, because this is still the foundational pieces to it, but, you know, the bottom five pieces really talk about, you know, what we have got to do with the marketing databases. You know, I still, I still cringe when I go in and talk to customers and I hear promotion history table. Because to me, it's, it's not the promotion history table anymore. It's not a direct mail table or an email table or those things. It's an experience table, right? It is the totality of the experience. It's the online side. It's the offline side. It is all aspects of those things. But you still find you know, that the marketing database still has a tendency, and part of this is due to the organizational separation, it still has a tendency to have a lot of the legacy pieces to it and have that legacy look and feel, and you know, it's not necessarily adopting those things. As much as the digital guys have the problem of the fact that you know, the digital side, you know, a lot of times they, they don't have a view or understanding of how the, you know, the known world and how the direct mail world and how all of those pieces sort of relate within there. So this is, and you know, the other thing is, is you know, at, at the bottom right in here is the fact that that marketing database has got to have the pathways out. It's got to have the connection up to it. It's got to have the way in order to harvest the data out of it, harvest the understandings, in order to put it into the interactive platforms uh, that will go forward. The insights platform. You know, this is, if you look at the bottom, the insights platform, there's, you know, there's, to us, there's two things. I mean, there's, there's the obvious component in the middle, right? The ability to actually create to explore, to analyze, to understand, to attribute, to do all of those things from the insights, to be able to report, to visualize, to push that out. But it, it's got to have the totality of the marketing database, the totality of all data within there, both from anything that would be on the interactive side, anything that would be within the known side of the house. You got to have that the, the complete visibility. And with technologies today, you know, while your marketing database may change a little bit, well, you had relational database technologies used for core things like, you know, marketing automation and some of those pieces. But, you know, your, your analytics community may be looking at a pool sitting within a Hadoop environment, maybe sitting within a large big data environment, large big data environment, but a large big data environment, we, I guess we could call it that. And, and, you know, so there may be changes technology wise but in essence, the, the, the core of it, the concept of it is, is that they have the access to that pool. And the good news is, is we can actually handle that, where you, you, know, you can build those platforms today that are able to you know, pull that stuff together. The other piece to it is, is that there's really got to be that common uh, decision framework, right? I call it a framework. It's really, you know, it's, it's the area where insights are driven that I'm going to make decisions on, and I'm going to be able to have a channel come down to and say, hey, do we know who this person is? Right? Um, do I have something to tell them? Is there something important I need to know about them? Is there a common place? Is there something specific that we're testing with them? Is there some way that we want to optimize those experience to it? You know, we have to have that common framework that the analytics all drives into that I can deploy into these frameworks so that if I'm using it within the direct mail, the email side, the agent side, or if I'm using it from the channel, it's the same decision that gets made. That's the other piece that we find you know, regularly within these things is that you know, you'll have commonality of decisions and marketing and experience and things like that exist within you know, site search, social, you know, some of the digital pieces maybe, probably not social, that's usually left out. Then you'll have commonality within DM and EM and then you know, call center sometimes will do it and it becomes this big man. There should be a single platform where I can go back in and say, hey, Matt Milley just made an appearance here. What is the next best thing that I, I should tell him? It doesn't matter where I come in, through email, you know, if it was an email came out, direct mail, if I called the call center, I walk into that retail branch and swipe my loyalty card, right, if I, whatever it is, you know, I, I, I go in there and provide some information, some identity piece to it, I should be able to come back out and be able to have the fact that I would receive the same offer and the fact that all the other channels know that offer also. 
I mean, you get to those points where, you know, at what point in time do I need to see that offer 20 times, right? And I don't respond to it. I don't, uh, you know, have it. There should be a point in time within the decisions. You know, you look at the, the business rules engines that are down there to make the decision to say, hey, this is the 20th time we've showed it to him. For God's sake, don't show him any. He's not interested. Go to something else. Move on to the next piece to it. And those systems, those channel pieces that are out there should be able to come back and, you know, be able to take those things. So this is my, you know, this is my one big sort of architecture slide. I'd be, uh, you know, a bit remiss if I didn't actually put that out there. But, you know, when, when I look at the stack, you know, from the bottom, from the marketing database, you know, we call our recognition, the connected recognition capabilities on event and identity. I think about the insights platforms. We have our data management platform and the decision platform. If we, if we think back to how our quadrants works, there's a little bit of separation. Really, the green and the aqua box here, that sort of represents my data warehouse world, right? Uh, the blue boxes, the dark blue boxes, really represent sort of my interactive marketing world that's out there. But what you'll see, you see that little strip across the top that says the channel specific applications. You know, there's still a role. You know, the guys like, you know, Adobe and some of the things that they can do from the site personalization, some of those things, absolutely. You know, they, they're still in there. This, is, this, is, this system is not to replace those capabilities within channels. It's to better inform those capabilities within channels. And so that I'm not setting up my, sites, uh, my site personalization, trying to drive all my decisions, try to drive all my components within there. I can have site come to me and say, hey, what is that thing I got to tell them? Or what's that next piece I have to do? Or I can have, you know, the email or the direct mail or, you know, even on a retail branch, you know, wh whatever those things are where I'm going to communicate somewhere, I can come down to that decisioning platform that's out there. And in, in reality, no, one's, no one goes out and buys this whole stack. It's not this, this, this isn't necessarily the platform that someone goes out there. there are, there's probably an organization or two that will go write a check and try to accomplish the whole big picture. But the, you know, the message behind some of this is the fact that in reality, you have to have this kind of roadmap and you have to make every decision in this context to say, okay, if I'm buying, you know, test and target, or if I'm getting X plus one for my DMP, uh, or, you know, I'm using Redpoint down within the marketing automation side, you know, I have to know how that technology, and I have to have a plan and a roadmap that eventually it will integrate throughout this entire stack. If I, if I do it in absence of that, I end up where we are today. I have DMPs bought by the digital community. I have my marketing data warehouse owned by the marketing guys. I got the IT guys doing something completely different. So, you know, having that notion, having that roadmap is probably the more important thing than it is necessarily saying, hey, next year we're going to go buy, you know, connected CRM or we're going to connect all of these pieces together. And it's really, when you focus on it, you know, the big boxes of the technology, the fact is, is the arrows in between, the connective tissue. That's, you know, that's the challenges, and those are the pieces that you really have to focus on, making sure to have the plans in place in order to drive those pieces out there.